guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. I am joined by Wen, the Brazilian pro from Pain Gaming. He is one of my favorite guests because he's so nasty with so many different decks. And the deck that we're going to talk about today is this one, which is one of my favorite Lava Hound decks I've ever shared here on the channel, guys. I think you guys are going to love it. It has the Miner and the Lumberjack. Let's go ahead and hop into the Grand Challenge and see it live. Alright, so currently Wen is, as you can see, 9-0 into the 10th match here in this Grand Challenge. Hopefully he can finish it off flawlessly. He just got 12-1 before this recording, and I reached out to him immediately, and I was like, Wen, you've got to come on the channel because this deck is so nasty. And the thing, I'm just going to tell you right at the beginning of the video, guys, the thing that is so nasty about this deck is that the one push, and there's a formula that you guys can follow to have success with it, but the one push that you can execute with this deck in double elixir is so impossible to stop if you're the opponent and we're probably going to see it here in the live matches too it's really this deck's kind of bread and butter and i'm just going to tell you what the push is right off the bat here as we do connect for some damage on that right tower only 50 seconds into this first match so the push is start out with double elixir only again guys lava hound in the back then a baby dragon or an inferno dragon behind that lava hound as the first support card. Then lumberjack behind your king tower. Eventually that lumberjack will obviously catch up to the rest of the push. And then after that you can kind of react to the opponent. You can send in a poison or you can send in your other dragon. So if you use the inferno dragon, send in the baby dragon at the bridge. And then you send in the miner right before the lava hound's going to die. So they will have to contend with the miner tanking for the pups. The ra everything will be raged up because the lumberjack will pretty much be dead by that point. And then you'll have two dragons raged up as well. It's so difficult to stop that push. Hopefully, again, we will see it live here. And it looks like five-star general, I guess, we'll call him five-star general from Red Soldiers, is playing another version of Lava Hound Miner. But this version, I don't like it as much as Wen's version, guys. It has the E-Drag, still double dragon, but no Inferno Dragon. Instead of, the, instead of the Inferno Dragon, he's playing the Electro Dragon. And we'll see how Wen does. So far, so good here. Of course, one thing to consider in this matchup specifically, his Electro Dragon does counter our Inferno Dragon. So we'll see how he negotiates that kind of awkward matchup within the matchup. So we have a Lava Hound in the back. We are in double elixir time, so let's see if he does it. Baby Dragon behind the Lava Hound. This is a little bit different. I'll, I'll see if he does it. He doesn't do the same exact formula here because obviously he's against a Lava Hound deck. He needs to stop the, the oncoming uh, Lava Hound. Uh, but we'll see in other matchups. This one a little bit unorthodox, but here it is. Here's our Lumberjack against their Miner. We use the Barbarian Barrel as well. That's going to kind of tank for the pups on defense. And then we have the, the, uh, the, the Lumberjack going on the other side of the arena. 15, around 15 seconds left here in this match. We cycle a Baby Dragon in the back to take care of those guards. He will get a hit, though, with some guards, some damage with that Barbarian as well. So here we go. Another Lava Hound, another Baby Dragon. Is he going to do it again? We'll see. Okay, Inferno Dragon, that was a beautiful placement on that Inferno Dragon, guys. He's going to avoid the E-Drag uh, reset because of the placement of the Inferno Dragon. Now that Lumberjack's coming from behind. The Lumberjack gets to the tower, and that's going to be GG. There it is. One quick victory there for Wen. Let's go ahead and edit out, come into match number two here, guys. All right, guys, I said match number two, but match number 11, I guess. And what I'm going to do is, who knows, he might sweep this again going against Audux. Uh, he might sweep this again, so I'm going to have him share his most difficult matchup from the first 12 win, and we can go over that after he's done. I have just this, this feeling that he's just going to sweep the table because A, when is so good, and B, this deck is so good. Even if you're not traditionally a Lava Hound player or a Lava Loon player, give it a try. I think you guys will really like it. Works on ladder too, just as well as in challenges, so it's very flexible and versatile, this deck. So here we go. It's going to be against a, it looks like a Hog Freeze deck. Uh, I think it's it's similar to the simple deck that we shared here a few times on the channel, guys. This version has Skarmy, I believe Freeze, Mini P.E.K.K.A., and Dark Goblin would be his last three cards. But we'll have to wait and see. You never really know. Sometimes people change these decks every day. It's hard to keep up with. So here it goes, a Lava Hound. Let's see how he, how he handles a Lava Hound push in single elixir time here. Only a minute into this match. 
So we go against the princess here. He's going to wait till he gets close to full elixir or all the way to full elixir so he can react to the opponent. He's going to play that baby dragon. Baby dragon helps out against those bats. Then he sends the miner in as an assassin right on that princess. Obviously, princess being the best counter to his pups. A nice skarmy by the opponent, though, able to mitigate that damage. Now we have a uh, hog and a bunch of skeletons coming down, but a nice barbarian barrel. That's going to hold the hog probably to one hit. Meanwhile, look at our baby dragon, guys. Baby dragon is going to get, what, two or three hits? hits on that right tower, taking it down to 1869. Our tower is down to 1742, but remember, only 15, 20 seconds left here in single elixir time. This deck's gonna have a huge advantage when we get into double elixir time. So now we have the Inferno Dragon. When Wen doesn't have an obvious play to make and he doesn't have Tombstone in cycle, you'll often see him kind of cycle the Inferno Dragons behind the King Tower. So it's kind of a good uh, note for you guys if you're kind of in that awkward situation where no Tombstone, what do I do here? So he goes in with a Double Dragon in the right and he drops off that Lava Hound. He's probably just going to take this Hog damage. You, this is a beatdown deck after all, so use your Princess's Tower as a resource. And, and he does. Only one hit to that left tower. Now let's see what he does. There it is. The Lumberjack and back of the King Tower, just like we talked about. He has the, the Double Dragon at the bridge. Now he's going to probably poison here and send in the Miner. Here's the Miner. Freeze comes down from the opponent. And where's that poison? Where's that poison? There's the poison. Now check this out. Lumberjack's going to die. And how, how is the opponent supposed to stop that? How are they supposed to stop that push? And that is textbook exactly what I'm talking about. Double Dragon Lava Hound. Miner going in before the Lava Hound pops. And then... The Lumberjack dies, Rage is there, good luck defending that push, it's so strong. And the freeze is down, not enough time, that's gonna be GG. Come back to you guys for match number uh, 12. All right guys, here we go, can he go 12-0 and 0 with this deck? I have a feeling he probably can, but we'll see what he's faced up against here by Anton. Again, as I mentioned, guys, I will share the most difficult matchup. I think it's a Splash Yard matchup with uh, Inferno Dragon, Baby Dragon, and Nato. Uh, and freeze in the deck and this matchup here is going against inferno dragon So this could potentially be another difficult matchup We'll see what deck they're playing with a valkyrie as well So I don't know what this deck could be but we'll see we go in with the inferno dragon They play archers. I'm thinking maybe graveyard or something out of the opponent here uh, time will tell, so our Inferno Dragon beats up on that other Inferno Dragon and then lives to tell the tale of how he destroyed one archer as well. We're going to go ahead and reload with that Tombstone Expo. Oh my god, man. This meta is so wild. You never know what you're going to be facing here. So it's an Expo deck. We go in with the Barbarian Barrel, which is great against Expo. But remember, we have the Bar Barrel, we have the Tombstone, we have the Lumberjack, and the Miner. So unlike a deck where you do, you know, the normal Lava Loon deck, you only usually have two ground options. You usually only have a Tombstone in Skarmy or Tombstone in Guards. You don't really have four ground options. So against this matchup, we actually are way better suited to potentially win than we would with the traditional Lava Loon deck. Of course, we don't have the balloon uh, as we would in the Lava Loon deck either, so that's kind of something on the other side of the equation. But we're going to go in with a Lumberjack here at the bridge. Then we're going to have, eventually, a Raged Up Inferno Dragon. So Lumberjack is going to go ahead and the dro drops that Rage. is going to help the Inferno Dragon deal with that Valkyrie really quickly. We drop another Barbarian Barrel, buying a ton of time for the Inferno Dragon, forcing a Snowball out of the opponent. Look at the value that this one Electro Dragon, or excuse me, the Inferno Dragon has gotten for when here, taking that left tower down to 1538. But more importantly, I do think that we have a couple Elixir lead here going into double Elixir time. So we're going to drop that Tombstone. Here comes the Lava Hound, I can only imagine here. Fireball comes down for the opponent, and immediately, here we go with the Lava Hound. Uh, let's see if they play an Expo into this here. They do. So they cycle to that Expo. Expo right there at the bridge. We drop that Lumberjack right there as well, and the Inferno Dragon. Here comes a Snowball down. We will take some serious damage here from this Expo. Fireball comes down too, but they are so low on Elixir, guys. I think there's no, there's going to be no way they can stop this push again. Here comes the Miner down the lane. We have so many troops on this tower. Poison comes down again, and there it is, the power of the deck. We have a full health, or 
and not a full health, but maybe a two-thirds health now. Lava Hound, now Lava Hound's like, I got this. I got this, guys. No big deal. Just leave me alone. I'll take this tower down solo. It's so weird to see a Lava Hound solo a tower like that, but with six seconds left, what can the opponent do? It would probably even be a three crown there, and the opponent waves the white flag, and that's a 12 win for Wen. Dude, Wen can't lose with this deck. This guy's a beast. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and ask him to share the replay. I'll come back to you guys uh, once we have it. All right, guys, so against uh, Hellas Walker here. Hellas Walker is the guy that we're going to be watching this replay against. And uh, from Nova, Hellas. Uh, is Hellas a location? Am I, am I like, showing off my geographical noobness here? I don't know. Let's go ahead and dissect the plays that Wen makes. Of course, Wen's at the top of your screen here, guys. Annoying. I actually reached out to Supercell. I don't think they're going to do anything about it. But I reached out to them, and I was like, hey, anyway, you can kind of uh, let us... A, rewind replays, because to truly learn from your replays, rewind is so important. And B, uh, switch the sides so we can watch from whoever's perspective that we want to. So he freezes here, and that's the, the problem with this deck, right? Is And, and I lied, it's not a graveyard deck, it's that balloon freeze lumberjack deck. It's a difficult matchup for Wen, because again, he has the double dragon, Hellas Walker, excuse me, has the double dragon, and he has to contend with everything else in the deck. The NATO baby dragon is, is really good as well. Of course, they can activate with the, the, the king tower with the miner with their NATO, and then they can rely on the three tower strength on defense. So we'll see what happens here. He's going to go ahead and start by playing that bowler in the lumberjack. Meanwhile, Wen at the top is just going to cycle at this point. He plays the baby dragon there, and then he plays the poison down a nice poison value taking the inferno dragon the lumberjack and the bowler but he's still gonna have to deal with this bowler and he does so using that miner look at the patience on when he sent in that miner way to make sure the uh the inferno dragon was dead first so now the miner is going to make his way on the opposing side of the arena intercepted by that barbarian barrel and cycling the baby dragon in the back is hella's walker so interesting decision here from the opponent's uh vantage point they can go into the Lava Hound. They, they opt to just let this push kind of die. So they play the Bowler in the back. They have Freeze. They have Inferno Dragon one card away as well. We play the Inferno Dragon when that is. Plays the Inferno Dragon as well. So again, a double Dragon push here. He's just going to Freeze Inferno Dragon this. I think. There it is. Freeze down. Inferno Dragon down. And that's going to clean up nicely. And that's the power. That's why I said it was a difficult matchup, right? Because check it out. The Inferno Dragon plus Freeze can pretty much wipe out this entire push. Takes care of both of the dragons. And then poisons down. NATO's going to pull everything together for that baby dragon. We do get some chip damage with that miner. And look at how strong this deck has been so far on defense. Perfectly timed Barbarian Barrel there for Wen. On defense, we haven't taken any damage at all and all he's been doing is cycling baby dragons inferno dragons in the back so here it comes a big push potentially by the opponent but we have the inferno dragon and the baby dragon we missed the pull with that tombstone but it doesn't matter they opted not to freeze in that situation and now we have two ranged up dragons coming down the lane we force two dragons out of the opponent as well same dragons played in both matchup here and they give the well played our inferno dragon takes care of the opponent's inferno dragon and here we go again it's gonna be a lava hound and a baby dragon they're gonna meet at the bridge and we're gonna try to build a big push here let's see what Wen does in this situation he's gonna play the he's gonna leak an elixir then he's gonna play the inferno dragon he has Miner selected. He has Bar Barrel selected. Is he going to use the Lumberjack? Nope, he's going to reload with the Tombstone on defense there. Try to deal with the uh, Lumberjack and the Bowler of the uh, of the opponent. We get a King Tower activation, but look at this. Look what's going on right now here, guys. We have the Lumberjack now at the bridge. Lumberjack's going to make contact again with that tower. Lumberjack's going to take it down single-handedly. Man, those pushes can be so lethal. And you can see he stacked up all those dragons there at the bridge on defense. We had at one point, I think, two Inferno Dragons and a Baby Dragon. While we also had the Miner going in, we had the Lava Hound on the tower. And then we sent in that Lumberjack. Sorry. We sent in that Lumberjack. Getting too excited here over mobile game, Ash. We sent in that Lumberjack at the bridge there, able to take that Princess Tower down. So guys, a huge shout to Wen. Check out his player stats and profile, and of course his social media information in the show notes below. And of course a shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Thank you for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And as always, take care, guys.